Don't be a damn go get this man. Don't be a damn go get this man. Don't be a damn go get this man. Go get this man you out with that. Just bought a stick in the can with a hand. Give me a leg in the can with a twin. Shit, I wish in the can with a hand. I ain't spend no. Niggas with money, nigga. Nigga, you gotta have money, nigga. Get that money, you gotta get this shit the real way. To where it... <laughs> if you're not putting yourself in, you know, say y'all, you know, girls want the bad boys and shit like that, but it's to the point where if you're not putting your life in danger, your freedom at risk, and potentially, and potentially the only chance that your family has to actually have some, have some that shit can be down the drain in a drain in a matter of fucking seconds because they can get you outside more of my words we we are due for another big rapper to be murdered here in just a moment more of my fucking words we are due you know what i'm saying we are due for it and 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 we're gonna be right back here Right back in the rap trap. Hey, man. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today, we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by A.O. Conseco. Pull a wig out where you heard it. Knock a bitch down in my Air Max. Bad grease business, I wear that. Get the fiends of blunt, let them share that. Show the chopper to your crib, then tear that. I can send a load, tell me where it. But have the money neat though. I'm bagging up some more thought with gringos. When you hit my phone, use the lingo. Money all around like casinos. Trap house jumping like you. Welcome back to the Rap Trap. I'm Ayo Canseco. This is In Hindsight. Let's get straight to it. I just told you, motherfucker, what was going on. Two weeks ago, I sat in this very same spot and told you we are due for a major rapper to be murdered. And once again, my words went unheeded. As if I'm some type of fucking insane person. As if I haven't been telling you what the fuck been going on since I touched down on this motherfucker. There's a lot of things we're going to talk about tonight. A lot of things we're going to talk about. Um, Pop Smoke is dead. Another rapper, young rapper. He fit the age range perfectly. He fit the criteria perfectly. He fit the description to a T. Even the fact that he recently dropped a project that performed, it made it to the charts, but probably not to the, the, the label's liking. I'm coming out the bat with this shit. I'm coming just off the dickhead. We going straight to the bullshit. I'm not with that sacrifice bullshit. That's some, you know, I, I, I go spiritual, you know, when I, 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 when I, I speak about, you know, demons possessing you in the street. And shit like that but even when i go there it's still in real world like i'm not that luminati bullshit out the window fuck that dumb shit that's some shit you can't control the shit that i'm talking about you can control it fully it's just you have to love your life more than you love that life the life of the glitz and glamour the holes people looking at you like this and not like this you have to really love yourself. And that's why the labels have a criteria and a description um, for the people that they target. Um, Pop Smoke, um, was he just had his project. Um, it made it to the chart, didn't perform as well as the label would have liked. And so the label sent some motherfuckers in to kill him to take his shit up. They could have got him arrested as I keep telling y'all, they could have just got him arrested. They go to the golf course, all the label heads. They go to the golf course to meet with the judges, the DAs, the prosecutors. 
certain lawyers, privatized prison owners, big farmer executive, big farmer uh, um, executives, uh, and, uh, the Hennessy, fucking um, Ciroc heads, um, just uh, uh, the, the the Bentley. All these people who profit off of the demise or off the destruction, off the all these people who feed off of us, the black community, they're going to be on that golf course putting their bid in. Making sure the record labels know, hey, make sure you get you an artist. You know what I'm saying? Privatized prison. Like, hey, nigga, make sure you... We want, we want, we want a YNW Miller. We need a Tay K. We need motherfuckers on this dumb shit. This dumb shit, the young shit. Go grab a gun shit. We don't want no fucking J. Cole now. Nah. No goddamn Kendrick Lamar. We need a motherfucking Kodak Black. We need an example. So the rest of these, the, the, the young black, the warrior class of the black community know exactly what they supposed to do. Make sure that they know they supposed to kill the people that look like them, not us. Make sure they know when they see us is respect. When they see us is about money, it's business. When they see one of them is about hate. Fuck that nigga. That's the mindset we want to have. Here you go. Handle your business. Now, Hennessy walk in. Hey, we got this new brand of Hennessy. I want all your artists to have this Hennessy in their videos. There you go. They leave. Here come Big Pharma. Hey, um, we got the new Percocet. Actually, we want to take it up a notch. We got them on a Percocet. We want to push Roxy's. Start saying something about Roxy's. We want these rocks to go through the roof. They, they, they said a little bit about it. We want it to go to the roof. There you go. Bentley come in. Hey, look. Every, every, every black man who got some money needs to be buying a Bentley. Here you go. Here go five cars. Look, dog. let me holler at y'all. Look, I don't put that Patreon, them numbers for the Patreon. That's for AO Nation. If you're an AO Nation, you need to be a Patreon. I don't put all the videos, they won't be listed on YouTube. So if you want all the videos and shit like that, you need to be a Patreon. If you want to contribute to the conversation that we have every Monday night, we go live on the Big Bass Podcast YouTube channel at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you want to contribute to that conversation, have the call in number to where you can call in at any fucking time during those lives. You need to be a Patreon. I don't put those Patreon numbers in the men two numbers at the beginning of the show just so you can hear Winning Streak. As a matter of fact, if you want the whole Winning Streak single, all you have to do is send two dollars to the Cash App or the PayPal, um, and I'll send the song to whatever email is attached to your PayPal or Cash App. It's not that fucking hard. Um, but the Patreon is for AO Nation. I expect for y'all to fuck with that. I salute everybody, all of my niggas, all of the me and two, me and two, me and two members, AO Nation members that have been donating to the show. As you know, I'm a nigga on YouTube, so it is what it is. So when you contribute, it's a big deal to me. Um, but don't go crazy. It seemed like my message has went out there to where people know if you're a small business, you gotta have at least $100 for promotion. Uh, if you're an artist, you need to have at least $200 for promotion. Other than that, just leave me alone. I do this shit by myself, but I salute everybody for really giving me my time, giving my space to do what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. So I salute you. You wanna go to work? Let's go to work. That IG sponsorship shit is not doing shit for you, and you know that. So handle your fucking business, holler at me. Let's get some shit done. I see y'all in a minute. Get the shit together, be home. They understand we are the easiest people to market something to because we're going to buy, buy, not invest. We're going to buy shit. When the judicial people come to the table, they don't have to put no money down because these hands wash each other. 
the judicial is just like, I right, just keep doing what you're doing. We're going to get inmates and we owe you a favor. So when it's time for your artist to uh, renew a contract or you don't want to um, uphold your end of the contract, we're going to snatch them up on a RICO. We'll snatch them up on just anything. We'll make it stick, you know. We got, you know what I'm saying, we talked to Tom. We talked to Mark around this bitch and Facebook, Instagram. So we got everything, Snapchat. So we got all the evidence we need. You know how to pick the artists that are going to incriminate themselves. So anytime you need us to pull them, we'll pull them. I'm sure they smoke weed in the video. Sure they had something that resembled a gun. You made sure they were felons, right? You made sure they were felons? Okay, we good then. At any point in time, we'll pull them. That way, when it's, t so, when they about to start arguing, with the artist is about to pull the, the uh, tour lanes or the rich the kid shit and start complaining about, you know, like my label ain't supporting me and all this shit like that, they'll have a case to where they can't worry about the label. They got to worry about beating this case. So they wash hands. We'll pull whatever artist you want us to pull off the street. You just keep on picking the artists who are going to tell the young blacks to come to prison willingly and indict themselves. Police officers ain't never been this fucking big. Ain't no running involved. We don't have to go on no blocks. We just, nigga, you can be a 12-year-old computer geek and be a police officer. All you got to do is just, uh, well, that's a charge. No, that's, no, uh, pick you up at will. They gave you what I like to call uh, the criminal body cam. And you're going to make your own case. You're going to make an open and shut case on yourself. And the rappers are going to incentivize you to do so. If we can't recognize that this is a system, then Pop Smoke will not be the last. And he won't be the last. He won't be the last. Because niggas can hear exactly what they're going through at this point in time, but cannot break away. They can't break away. from the only thing that gave them validation. The only reason girls even act like they fuck with me is because I get online, yeah, bitch, we'll edit this bitch out. We'll edit this bitch out, you see it, you see it, we'll edit this bitch out. I wish a fuck nigga would. Fuck nigga, I kill you. I incriminate myself daily. Yeah, smoking that big, uh, uh, we smoking chuka, we smoking brick, we smoking, uh, we smoking the dead ops. GDK, BDK, we, we, we the chos, we the, we the woos. Nigga, and I'm hearing about the, the gang shit up there so fucking retarded, like. Bloods and Crips on. Are, are the Cho's and the, the Blood Crips and GD's are the, are the woos. And, and I, I, I think, um, I think Brum D is actually going to do a video on that breakdown and how, and how that, that whole thing works. So make sure you go to his channel to get, get that breakdown. But it's like, so niggas found a way to unite to where we don't have to beef over the blood and crip no more, but we gonna beef for another reason. It's like the only thing that we can continue to, to be innovative in is reasons to kill niggas. The only thing that niggas is innovative in is 
reasons to kill niggas and giving niggas reasons to kill them. Disrespecting a nigga by saying I'm smoking your dead homies in a blunt, that's not that's not deep enough. Now we have to go to your dead homies grave and smoke on top of it. Or piss on the grave. And that's normal now. Meanwhile, we're all going to the same courts. Getting fucked over by the same fucking judges. Both of our families in, 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 in the courtroom is being devastated by the by the years that we're being given. But we can't find no reason. All right, fuck that. Um, niggas ain't hearing it. Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke went to L.A. And as I said before, it is a requirement. If you're, if the label's going to put any type of money behind you, you have to be beefing with someone. Your life must be in real danger. You can't be rap beefing with nobody. You have to, your life has to be in real danger. Your freedom has to be in danger. You have to have that going on coming in. And that precedent was set by the Chicago drill wave. They up the ante. If you not, if you don't have mortal enemies in a close proximity that you beefing with, viewers aren't interested in you. Viewers can't. I saw a white boy last night. For some reason, I was watching this shit. I saw a white boy last night talking to one of the New York rappers, uh, saying something about the Blickies. The Blickies. Uh, oh. Fuck the blickies and all that shit like that. Watch somebody call him trying to show. But he was he was disrespect he was he was saying nigga and everything. Like he was talking just like a nigga would talk to this nigga. And that's what these labels want. Give the white kids something that they can interact with so they can feel more related. To the situation even though this life has nothing to do with them but it's fun it's fun as long as you can play around with it and who the fuck knows you might be like the, the little white boy little esco or whatever uh, slim jesus whoever the fuck uh uh the fuck the white boy name is in new york what uh, matt the demon max the demon or some shit like that that's what they want that's what we need, you know. And then you get the the shit. What what the white boy name was in uh um Chicago that got uh found dead in the car in the trunk of his car. Can't even remember. But that's what they want. So you have that. So you you banging woo or whatever the fuck, and you have the mortal enemy of the. The, the chose or chew or whatever the fuck. So now we can watch this as little white kids. We can watch this the same way we watch Transformers. We can watch this the same way we watch the Ninja Turtles. We can watch it the same way we watch uh, Power Rangers. It's a real life um Real life action figures? Real life video game? Except when the people get killed, it's not for fake, it's for real. And that's where we should be the most disrespected. When we get killed, our numbers go up. But we don't get no fucking money. 
they have it so fucked up to where the artist is coming from a broken situation, broken home, and, and fucked up. Um, didn't graduate high school. That's a fucking requirement. Just so he don't really understand the contract himself. Let alone his mother, uh, his close friend or whatever the fuck like that. No one knows what the fuck the contract was. And it's I'm pretty sure some bullshit. Pop Smoke dies. Pop Smoke dies. Motherfucker that was coming up around him. Which was all fucking fake. Because we finna talk about, you know, how nobody called 911. Um, nobody wanted to snitch. I'm about to show you about your homeboys. Um, but motherfuckers... We we so fucked up down here that when we when some pops off around us, we just try to latch on and take that shit to the guy. I'm gonna hold on this motherfucker. Not trying to, you know, learn how to do nothing specifically. Nigga just trying to smoke blunts and act hard. Because in the rap trap, like that's nigga, you 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 being too much of a fucking rapper. Plus the fact the big rapper might feel intimidated because you just doing too much rapping. You too focused. He not that focused. Why you so focused? So you could so you can't do shit but be an enforcer. I was just talking about this shit with um with DJ um about how motherfuckers will you know box you out of certain situations because they they had to fight for their spot. And they, they the bottom man on the totem pole, but they at least they got a spot. They, they don't want to let you in because you might pass them up. And that's just our mentality. So, Pop Smoke dies and everything around him just fucking falls. Everybody goes back to being broke. But the as I've told y'all time and time again, I brought this out real heavy with the Nipsey Hustle shit. The one fucking uh, organism that does not lose no matter what happens is the fucking label. So the label does everything in their power to incentivize this deathly suicidal behavior and you're telling me that they wouldn't do whatever they had to do to make sure they continue to make money, make more money, especially when look at this situation, my nigga. It's, 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 it's normal for a rapper to get killed. So much so, speaking of DJ, have you noticed that when a motherfucker die, like, you can just pretty much all the big rappers, they can just copy and paste what they said about the last rapper dying. I was just with them, man. This is crazy. We were just in the studio together, man. We were going to make big moves, man. Damn, R.I.P. Big Homie, man. Damn, R.I.P. Nip. I mean, uh, Pop Smoke. You didn't, you didn't copy and paste the whole motherfucking statement. Damn, man, R.I.P. Juice, I mean, uh, R.I.P. Uh, Pop Smoke, man, damn, this shit crazy, man. They took a soldier, man. Man, they took the wrong one, man. Y'all motherfuckers don't give a fuck about no goddamn rapper, man. None of you motherfuckers, and that's, and that's another thing you gotta understand, like, you be on this dope. You don't need drugs, so you 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 feeling the you feeling the moment, you feeling the vibe of, of the situation. It just everything feels so good right here. You just feel like you just so much of friends with these people that you just meeting. These people don't give a fuck about you, but why would they? You don't give a fuck about yourself. If you gave a fuck about yourself, you would carry yourself different. You wouldn't have death chants all in your music. 
every time you speak, it's about death to someone. Death to someone. Death to someone. Someone has to die. Someone has to die. If it wasn't smoke, then it would have been his op. Do we care less when the rapper kills his op? That's a victory, huh? That's another thing. When Pop Smoke Enemy die and they, you know, throw a party in the club, nobody give a fuck. Nobody give a fuck. When Pop Smoke and them rob a motherfucker and they, and they you know, smile and party about the shit, it, it's just a game. It's just a part of the game. But nah, man, today, uh, an up and coming artist, man, just got, just got to cut down this crime. Oh, man, I uh, just. So what about the other fucking dude that he killed? What about the other motherfucker that got robbed? They did it. They were talking about doing it. They were celebrating it. But because he's a he's a he's he has more numbers, so nigga, we care. That, that's what we care about. We don't care about black boys dying. We just care about the, the ones who who got the jury in the, in the... You motherfuckers are so fucking fake. You only talk about it because it's news. TMZ covered it, so you got to cover it. This is, this, this is what I'm saying. You don't give a fuck about these rappers. Most of you motherfuckers doing this shit because y your fucking boss told you to do it. You're obligated to do it. You sell poison. You uplift the behavior until the behavior comes back to the one who put the behavior out in the world. Do we fuck with Pop Smoke because he was rapping that shit? He was a good rapper? Is that how he rose? Or did motherfuckers fuck with him because they believed that he really did that shit? We go back to the beginning of the rap trap. If motherfuckers fuck with him because of how real the shit is, because he actually do the shit, we have to know that somebody's on the other end, but we don't give a fuck about them because they not famous. I don't believe in that. I know far more non-famous people than I know famous. I would give a fuck about the non-famous people, me. So that the, the fake shit, the fake little, oh man, I was just with you, bro, man. Oh man, I can't believe it, man. How you can't believe it? This all a nigga was on. It, it, it blow my mind. It blow my mind. When motherfuckers cry, when gangsters die. What the fuck? Like, are you serious? So jail and death ain't part of the street no more. Soon as he got in the street, jail and death, that, no, no, he, not him. He exempt. That's why you niggas getting killed out here. Because you think that you the, you the, you the exempt one. You the one special one that the rules don't apply to. Rules don't apply to you. You can do everything that them boys did that died. Everything them boys did that went to prison forever. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna touch you. You different. And we find out time after time after time that you're not different. Look at the people... Look at the artists who are still alive, who made it through the years, and look at the way they move. But there's a gauntlet that you have to make it through in order to get to the point where you can have security. This is the rap trap. When you first coming in the game, you can't fuck with security. You have to, you have to be open to attacks. And after you've made it through, it's kind of like the Salem Witch Trials. If you make it through me drowning you, then 
you a witch. So we're going to find another way to kill you. So if you can make it through this gauntlet, then you can have security. But you got to come out. You cannot fuck with that security. You can't. You got to have real guns in the videos. They got to be illegal guns. We found that out with the Tussie video. If you ain't seen that video, that's the video that I predicted that a rapper was going to die in a minute. That's on this channel also. You have to do everything that goes against your better judgment. You have to show that you are really retarded. And that's why you have only a few motherfuckers that can make it. And at this point, nobody's making it. Everybody has, like, everybody has a charge. Just go through the line. All of them have charges after fame. And can't stop. Look at NBA Youngboy. That was the last video I just did. After getting off probation, after making it off the papers, Nigga went straight back to doing the shit that, like, as a felon. Fuck this shit, nigga. I still got big five. Fuck, nigga. I still hear that bitch out. Fuck, nigga. On every day. On my mama. Because that's where your fan base is. You didn't build your fan base off of reading books and walking old ladies across the street. You made your fan base from threatening to kill people and laughing after they died. All I'm, and, and, and really what I'm saying here is if a nigga died like he lived, then we should be saluting a nigga, celebrating a nigga. Nigga died like a gangster. What's up? He went out the real way. What's all this surprise? But uh, man, I can't. You know, I gotta, I gotta bring news to you guys, man. Today, uh, it's crazy, man. I can't believe it. Uh, another, another up and coming artist that just got gunned down for no reason, just, just unnecessary violence. First of all, this was a fucking robbery. First thing, this was a goddamn robbery. Nigga, if you don't want to die, give me the fucking money. This is a robbery. You fucked up. Do y'all know why or how these niggas got the goddamn address? This nigga got in town and started telling motherfuckers, bring some hoes through. So now the word is going through strippers and the, and, the, and the address starting to go through. He just had a party at this house. Out of bounds. You in Los Angeles, California somewhere. And you think because you in the, on the good side of town, somebody didn't, somebody just, just didn't lace you up. Oh, man, you good over there. Yeah, you, you, oh, man, you in Beverly Hills, man. Don't nothing happen out there. You good, man. You good. Do your thing, man. Party, party. You do your thing, man. You good. You good. Label probably got him the goddamn Airbnb. Y'all motherfuckers better stop looking at niggas all the goddamn time and start looking at the fucking money, man. Who gonna bet me that his numbers don't go through the roof right now? Who gonna bet that? You think these motherfuckers can't see the numbers when a rapper die, how they numbers go up? You don't think they have the method of how to fucking make a rapper go fucking platinum? You think it ain't never been no rapper who went to jail on purpose to boost his fucking album sales? But we so goddamn scared to go at the establishment that we'll just keep on, ah, uh, that, that nigga, that nigga, that nigga. Said it was from two to six people. The word coming out that uh, the, the next door neighbor called the police or 
And then the word come out that somebody in the house called back home to New York, letting them know what's going on. And the folks from New York had to call the police down there in, in California. Let's talk about homeboys. Let's talk about this love that you get from having all this money and all this jewelry, all this clout. What did I tell y'all about listening to your music in the back of a police car or listening to your music while you bleeding out? It, and you can, you can do this exercise if you've ever hurt yourself. Next time you get hurt real bad, listen to, like, and, and this, if some music is playing or some shit like that, you don't understand how fucking torturous that music is. That's just from you being hurt from maybe a weight falling on your foot or something like that. Imagine going through what they're talking about on the song. And you need help. Can you imagine his last moments? I'm hit. I'm hit. Bad. And everybody in this bitch want to play to the cold. Hold up. Hold up. And this how you going to die. This is how you gonna die. Because motherfuckers wouldn't call the fucking ambulance until they got their dope to a safe place. Until they got their gun to a safe place. Motherfucker ain't never shot their gun to the first. Ain't, ain't for nothing but show. But they ain't supposed to have no firearm. So the next five years of their life is more important than the rest of your life. You bleed now, and everybody go to throwing shit out their pocket trying to get. Uh, hold on for you call them. Hold on, hold on for you call them. Hold on, hold on. Let me get this goddamn. Pick that shit up. Get that. Goddamn it. Hold on, hold on. You good? You good? Put pressure on it. Put pressure on it. Goddamn. Get that mo. Get pick that shit up. Goddamn these fuck. Oh man, I hope nobody heard that shit. Hold on. You good? You good? Put, pre put pressure on it. Goddamn oh, shit. Because we gangsters. And it's your fault. Because you chose, after knowing the code of the game, knowing the rules, you still chose to jump in. You chose to jump in. You knew that that nigga was ruthless. He didn't really fuck with you. She only here for the guy. She she can't stop just looking at this fucking ring you got going. Every time your hand moves, this bitch head is like a fucking like a a a, a, a what is that? A, like a clock. Like follow my clock, whatever the fuck. Bitch head like a metronome. Every time you move your hand, and and even worse, smoke probably knew. Something was afoot because there was too many motherfuckers up in here. Unknown motherfuckers. You told them to go get some strippers? What kind of niggas is these? Do you see now why the three S's are so important? For those of you who are new, the three S's are sobriety, solitude, Celibacy. Anybody that points out that celibacy starts with a C, you get blocked automatically. For those of you who want to play that game, sexlessness. Sexless. Whatever you want to do. You see why it's so important now? If you want success, you can't be distracted. I want a bitch. I want to get high. I need my niggas around. But in this game, you damn near forced to break that. Well, Future had to come out and say, I ain't do that. I don't, I don't do those drugs. It's just what people wanted to hear. You can be one way in front of the camera and another way behind it, but you just know somebody 
it's gonna come out man nigga fake so you really try to live this shit and the easiest way to get a nigga is through a bitch so when i'm out of bounds i'm not hitting up whoever hitting up the nearest fucking escort service and saying actually that'd be fucking smarter but even with that like who the fuck are these escorts the fuck you you trust every motherfucker at mcdonald's or at subway at fucking burger king because they in uniform all of a sudden they just robots now hell fuck no everybody trying to get extra money everybody and everybody high Motherfuckers owe favors, so here go this stripper hoe. She thinks she paying off a debt. Hey, I got uh, it's a New York nigga in here. Yeah, 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 he got a lot of diamonds. He got a lot of diamonds. Y'all need to come down here. The address here, 443 Beverly Hills Drive. Down. Get here now. And go right out there like, who want to party? Go right out there, bitch, and give a lap down. Like, you ain't never heard fucking Mona Lisa? Go listen to Lil Wayne Mona Lisa, man. How do niggas like nigga how, like what kind of street nigga is you that you don't know that the bitch is the like that's the key the bitch is the key All I need is for him to be distracted just a little I need a way in So I'm going to have a bitch fat ass fake ass fake titties makeup and weave and I'm gonna send that bitch right on up that motherfucker. And you lead it door open by saying just, yeah, just, just any bitch, just, yeah, whatever. Just any kind of bitch, just, just bring a bitch to. We trying to party tonight. Who told you to go up there, man? Somebody from Smoke Camp, man, let it be known whether or not the label sent you there, man. That's all I wanna know. And I'm out the way. Just let it be known whether or not the label did that, man. Because it's 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 too, it's all this war in the street and nobody is looking. So it's, it's just all this turmoil and war down here at this level. But then at this level, it's like the label, the execs, it's everybody's looking down into the fucking octagon. What was that movie with Eddie Murphy where at the end the white man gave the other white man a dollar or some shit like that? You went through all this shit for a dollar. These motherfuckers is so high up on the fucking wealth chart that they don't even use money anymore. And that's, that's a whole nother conversation. But if we could just get somebody to just say, hey, man, look, I got put in this position because of the label or this because I, I'm. Come on, my nigga. It's like, dog, with niggas being this fucking predictable, you could set a nigga up three months down the line just because you know what's going to happen when he goes like you. You're. Well versed enough with chemicals that you know what's going to happen when baking soda touches vinegar. And you just are prepared for the blow up. You just there knowing, all right, I'm going to have this on because it's going to fizz out. Like it's, but nobody, nobody, it's just, we so focused on, I got to kill him. He trying to kill me. Bad bitch. I got to get this new Brightland. Uh, Ferrari came out with a new fucking truck. And if you don't got it, then you lame as fuck. They got these new jeans, lame as fuck. They're called Amiri's. And it's just, that, that's that's what's going on up that motherfucker. The, the ugly ass fucking Gucci shoes, the Ferragama shoes, the, the these ugly ass fucking shoes. And, it's, and, and the way I look at it is like, these people have to be up here at this level just laughing. Look at what we can throw down there and these motherfuckers just pick up. They're broke as fuck down there. They don't have any money. They're fucked up. If they took that money and started putting it into them, like if we have extra money to spend this much on shoes, let me help the next man. But that's, it's why, but I'm trying to see why is that such a far-fetched thought? 
we're being killed out here. Can't we can't see that? We can't see that we're being killed out here. In order for us to to change something, we have to have a reason to change. Okay. Rappers are being murdered. Dog, we're never going to hear about the niggas that that fuck with pop smoke like that's that's over. That whole thing is over. And it's going to go to the next spot. That nigga going to die. Next spot. That nigga going to die. Who's winning? Who's winning? Furthermore, what do you think, how differently do you think Pop Smoke would have moved? This is what hindsight is for. How differently do you think he would have moved if two months ago he knew his eyes were going to capture the last thing that his eyes captured? Meaning, these people that I came with. Fuck the bitches who set this shit up. Who was probably already gone. But these niggas who I came with didn't even call the fucking ambulance for me. Somebody probably had to call one of my loved ones in New York and tell them what's going on. And they called the fucking ambulance. You niggas watch me die? This is all I'm saying to you. You don't know, rapper, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Young boy. Young and Ace. JD Youngin. Glock 9. I'm talking to you. If Pop Smoke knew that the niggas that he brought wouldn't even call the ambulance for him, how differently do you think he would have moved? And I, I, it's a big, I, that's a that's a big theory to wrap your mind around. All good, but it happened. He's dead. He's dead because of betrayal. Because no one around was smart enough to say, nigga, don't. What the fuck? He wasn't big enough to tell the nigga who made the call. Smoke wasn't strong enough to tell the nigga who started calling bitches. Man, don't tell a motherfucker where we at because he didn't want to look scared. If niggas do not start thinking with hindsight, meaning wisdom, I see what he went through. I'm going to be wise and learn from his mistakes. You can't ask the nigga next to you what he's going to do if the worst should take place. Because I'm sure the niggas that would pop smoke, Man, them nigga would just, man, anything, bro. Anything. Go bananas. On oh, my dad. On oh, my dad. I'll fucking murder you. All that just rah rah heavy shit. Pop Smoke just knew he had an army around him because he probably seen them niggas fight with him one time. When they was deep as fuck, they, they, they went and fought some niggas. So he just knew that, yeah, man, these niggas, they gonna ride and die for me. That's all, just. A fight? That's why I tell niggas, until you know how a nigga gonna react in that interrogation room, you really don't know nothing about him. Nigga can shoot out the window, shoot up somebody's house, even shoot at a nigga. Even shoot a nigga. But... That interrogation room is going to tell the fucking ethics and the morals of a man. Everything else is just, you know, you're not even thinking. You'd be hiding the motherfucker. That interrogation room will sober you the fuck up.
If niggas don't start thinking, which they won't, I'm gonna say we got about three more rappers, about three more rappers to die, and then maybe we'll start getting it, maybe. Um, it's sad, man. It, 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 it's sad that the only, see yeah. The only way to get a motherfucker to to even look at their life is by something happening to a rapper. A rapper has to die in order for them to even look at what's going on around them. So this is why from the beginning I said rappers dying is uh, that's a, a good thing. It's good for the culture. It's good for us because now we can see real consequences to real actions because everything before that just looked like oh nigga we out here nigga i'm catching charge after charge niggas whatever nigga we got big brother nigga big money big bitches not big bitches maybe a big bitch if y'all ain't seen that um if y'all haven't seen the um dad let's mom rip out daughter's hair on a big face podcast go look at that shit i had a whole part about big bitches but they make it look so good they telling you they doing all this shit and everything just looks fine and dandy so like i said if they won't tell you the truth in life then they damn sure gonna tell the truth in their death that death is gonna tell you the truth. Is going. Nigga overdosed. Nigga got murdered. I probably have to do another video on um on the niggas who killed them. But like I said, that's insignificant. At this point, we're dealing with a whole system. Like I believe in taking out the actual sickness, not the fucking symptoms. Symptoms will keep coming if we don't take out the sickness, the disease. And this disease is on a very high level. And people are making money off of our deaths. It behooves them to continue to keep us on this same path. If we won't stop it, no one else is going to. It's on us. To stop it. This has been a rap trap. I'm Ayo Canseco. Make sure you go to the Patreon so you can get the unreleased uh, episode. We just dropped the unreleased NBA Youngboy video. Um, what else is over there? The unreleased um, nigga popping the 15 fucking Percocet trying to get little baby attention. Um, like I said her daughter's hair because her dad when he got it did it, it's just it's too much going on right now it's time to focus up make sure you hit the paypal make sure you fuck with that cash app show love um y'all understand what youtube is trying to you know what i'm saying do the niggas and shit like that so make sure you support the channel like that i see y'all in a minute love love